Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England coming to you from Daytona State College and uh, this is a, vi a video, a simple video for COP4834 which is Web Systems 2 and this is really just understanding the basics of how server-side web programming works, the, the, the very first video and just understanding the concepts of it. So let's first look at just a web page request, okay? You're sitting behind the machine, you type in the URL into the browser and what happens is that goes off and now I'm not going to go through all the process of how it figures out how to get to the server that it goes to, but it goes to the, but it eventually ends up at a server. The server says, "Oh, you're looking for this page. It's a document, typically on the server. It gets the document and it sends it back to you. But there's not a lot of fancy stuff going on there. You asked for a file, it found the file, and it sent the file back to your machine." Now, when we get into server-side programming, we actually add quite a bit of capability to this. So let's look at the concept of a server-side um, when you're actually having the server process some stuff. Well, same thing happens. You start off, you send a request to the server, but now that server request is a little bit more complex. And typically, the server is going to send it to a file. Okay, And we'll talk a little bit what those files look like, but it's going to send it to a file. But the file is a special file it has a server-side extension. Okay, the server recognizes it needs to do stuff with that file. And depending upon the instructions in that file, it goes off and it may grab some documents and put them together and then get some information from a database and format it and put it into a table. And it may work with multiple files. But in the end, it sends back over a single document back over to the, ser to the, to the user who sees that. So, the whole concept of server-side page, a server-side programming, is understanding how to make these files do the things that you want them to do. Okay, now let's talk about how you do this. Because if you're just looking for a file, okay, from the server, you just send it the name of the file, and it gets the file and it brings it back. That's pretty simple stuff. But now you need to send more information over to the server. You behind that browser window have to send information to the server so the server may need to know what to do with that information, may, may need to do stuff. And really, what you send over is a bunch of name value pairs. Ooh, name value pairs, that sounds scary. No, a name like a variable and the value that goes with the variable. Okay, that tells that page that's going to do some processing exactly what are you looking for? What do I need? And there's two ways of passing this. There's the HTTP GET, there's actually more than two ways, but there's two common ways of doing this. HTTP GET and HTTP POST. And the bottom line of this is that in the HTTP GET, you can see what's being passed over. So for example, if you're using active server pages, down here you'll see this form.asp, and you'll see this funky string that's got question mark, and then a name equals, and a value equals, and it won't say name, it'll be a something, equals and then a value and then an ampersand and then a name and a value and you can actually see the variables you passed over to the server and the server is going to have to know what to do with them that's again that's the whole concept of server-side programming knowing what to do with those variables and making the page return the return page be what the user was requesting the post as far as the user is concerned and the fact that you can't see it in the URL Post does the same thing. The only big difference here is that the query string that has those name value pairs in a get is actually sent inside the URL. It's, you, it's visible. And in a post, it's sent inside the message body. Okay. Either way, you're going to take that information on the server side, figure out what the user wants, and send it back over. That's the bottom line of it. So, you will want to know, as a programmer, some of the differences between using GET and POSTS, like GET requests. You can cache GET requests. It's all in the URL. You can take that URL and stick it someplace and then bring it back and pull back with the variables that you have. And they stay in the browser history. And they can be bookmarked. Okay, But all that information is right there in the URL. It's not very secure. POST, hey, you can't cache it. Okay, it doesn't remain in the browser history, can't bookmark them. Big difference though, posts you can have huge amount of information sent over. Get, it's restricted to the length of the URL. 
So there's all sorts of things that you can do there. So let's look a little bit back at that same thing that we looked at before, that whole concept of the server-side page request, and say, well, now, when you bring up a web page and you enter some information and you hit the submit button, that submit can send that information back over to the server and you can send it to the same file you got it from or you can send it to a separate file. In other words, you can have the processing be in a totally separate file than the file that was originally served to you. But programmers like to have it returned back to the same file. Okay. Well, now this means that, the, the, that this file has to be able to know a little bit of information. And this is the concept of a post back. So in other words, I send you a file. You do some stuff. It may be a form. You fill out information on the form, and you send it back to the server by hitting submit. And it goes back to the same file on the server that you had originally gotten. But now it's going to do something different with it. And in this case, the, you, the, the programmer has to make a decision. If it's a post back, you may do one thing. And if it's not a post back, if it's the first time you're seeing that file, it might do one other thing. There, so there's the decision made. This is one of the most common mistakes that I and other programmers make when they're doing website programming, is they don't check to see if it's a post back and do the other stuff that you need to do. So in other words, I send it back over. I don't check to see if it's a post back. And I send you back the original file so what you get back is a blank copy of the form you just submitted. But you don't want a blank copy of the form you just submitted, you just submitted it. Okay. Well, what I really should be doing is I should check to see if it's a post back, take all that data you sent over, put it in the database, wherever else I need to put it, and then send you back, hey, I'm validating that you sent this over, is this what you sent? And that's the best way to deal with this. So those are basic concepts in server-side programming. Okay. Now, one last thing we're going to talk about here is some of the languages you can choose from. Now, this is just a few of the languages that you can do server server side languages. Um, the ones that you see very commonly, probably the most common is Active Server Pages or ASP.NET Pages, with that good old extension that you'll see ASP and A or ASPX. And you know what language people are using when they're doing server-side programming because all you got to do is look up in that URL and see does it have a .asp or a .aspx. Some other ones that have been around for quite a while, Perl, Common Gateway Interface, you see that CGI, CGI or PL extension. PHP, probably the uh, open source, probably the most common web pages on you know, the, the, the internet right now, PHP. Um, Java server pages, JSP, Ruby, Python, and then that uh, good old Adobe product called Fusion. So these are all just server-side languages. Let you write a page with all that ability to do the processing of that page and pull all the files and make the choice of whether it's a post back. And they're just slightly different variations, but they all do the same thing. So that is your basic introduction to server-side programming. This is really intended for people who have done client-side programming and are getting into the server-side programming to have that concept of how the whole thing works in their head before they jump in and start doing it. Hopefully you have uh, got this down now and we're going to jump right into doing some of the ASP programming, some PHP programming, and it'll all be fun. Thank you. Good programming.